Yo, welcome back. Okay, super excited to have you guys on tonight. We're going to be talking kind of about a uh, on, I wouldn't say off the cuff topic. We're going to be talking about a topic that is just very stressful for someone like me. Um, we're going to be talking about why some people shut down in conversations that might be heated. Um, this could look like a political conversation. This could look like a belief conversation on faith. This could be a conversation, just something that that you, you really look at it and you're like, nope, not going to have a conversation with you anymore. Um, now, there, there, this is different than someone who... Um, this is this is different than someone who's just like I don't want to let you talk. That this is not what I'm talking about. I am talking about the person who um they're just like look, I don't get into politics because people are nasty, mean and they it's not a debate that they're afraid of. Like the, this is usually the person where it's like one on one they're really good about sharing their beliefs, but when it comes to being in a situation where people are yelling at each other and getting nasty and you see that they shut down and you're like, "Why didn't you say anything?" and they're like, I couldn't even think. That's the conversation we're going to talk about today um, in this episode because I think that this is something that can be misunderstood as someone who just you know doesn't want to stand up for their their beliefs or their their political beliefs or their religious beliefs or you know they just don't. But there there is a very real thing that can happen, uh, especially from someone who comes from trauma, is that when um, they start to see discord happening across their their groups of people they shut down and again this is not someone who's just saying i don't want you to have the floor so i'm going to shut you out i'm going to be rude to you not that's not what we're talking about like those people they're they're people who i just i'm like i won't even get to enter in a conversation with you because you're you get rude you get mean like i can't I always have thought like, I really love history. I really love learning from people. I really like knowing why someone believes what they believe. I love having conversations with people, but I do not and will never want to step into a room of someone who's like, my job is to tear you down emotionally, mentally, and physically. I won't do it because it sends me into fight or flight immediately. Um, I grew up in that kind of an environment where it's like, you don't get an opinion. <laughs> even like, let me, let me walk you through. <laughs> like, I grew up in an environment where it was, you don't get an opinion. And when you have an opinion, I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't have an opinion and you should shut your mouth and walk away with your, your tail between your legs. And then I'm going to ridicule, ridicule you in front of everybody and tell them why you're, while, you know, why you're stupid in this. It got so bad at points in my life that, uh, you would see, it was kind of like, oh my like there's so many moments where it was like if someone new came to a family function um and and my parents were really bad at this so this is why I can laugh this off and share this but it it would be like if someone new came to the to the group in our home I was like please don't mention anything political religious like, like like just don't just don't go there don't talk about your diet this week like just if you don't want to get attacked just don't talk about it and this was like friends like people where I was just like okay these are the things you don't talk about here and um I remember it was like a friend brought their their like boyfriend girlfriend and they were all just hanging out for like Thanksgiving or something like that and the person said something and I was like wow and you see half the room, it, like a family function, just get up and walk outside. And the person who was new was just like, wait, what happened? And I was like, I told you and you're in for it, man. Like you better, you better know your stuff. You better be willing to fight. And a full on three hours later, this person comes out and they're like, there's no winning with this person. And I was like, look, I warned you because I'm kind. <laughs> like I was like, y'all don't understand. Like this is, this is really hard. And, and for for me, it was it was one of those things that I came to recognize. It was part of this per individual's persona, where it was like I have to be the smartest person in the room. So that means I like no like literally to the point of we would be saying the same thing as each other. I I would be say like the sky is blue, and this person's like you're an idiot. The sky is not is not the sky is blue, and I'm like we just said the same thing, but because it didn't come from their mouth, they we're like, I have to take you out. This is not healthy behavior. This is actually why I have 
refrained <laughs> from most of my life sharing my story online because the internet is just like that with some people is because they are just like, I have to be the smartest person online, the one with the rudest comment, the one with the rudest like, you know, behavior toward you. And, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I get a lot of heat for sharing my story online. A lot of people are like, you're attention seeking whore. You're just trying to do this for likes and, and, you know, follows. You don't even like, you didn't even go through that. And I'm like, look, look, yo, I have papers. I have proof. I've got receipts. Like that's, that's why that there's that new saying is people are like, I got receipts, meaning like I got proof, like I can show you, but that's still not even good enough. And I've dealt with people like that my entire life, like my entire life, which is why I'm like, y'all, like this doesn't even come from social media. Like this comes from people in my life that have been in my life that I've had to say, it's time for you to go because we could literally be saying the exact same thing on any, anything, faith-based, political, food diets, the sky is blue. We could say verbatim the same thing. And you still look at me and, and not just like, no, you're dumb, like yelling at me, tone up, standing up aggressive. Like I'm going to take you out. And I'm going to take you out. Like, y'all, like, let me tell you, I don't learn when I'm in fight or flight. And I told that to somebody today because I really like, I, I follow a lot of different people for a lot of different um view from different viewpoints on a lot of different things in life and and a lot of politics is on social media it's kind of just the thing right now because that is what this year is it's a political year it's an election year and so let me rephrase that it's not a political year it's an election year <laughs> politics is always happening but what what this tends to happen with me is like and i'm just gonna speak for myself because i know someone else out there can relate but I was talking to somebody that I follow and I told this person because they share a lot of um, election updates and, uh, her, and her opinion. And I love hearing from her because of the way she presents. She can say something and I can disagree with it and I can tell her I disagree with it. And she's not like, well, you're stupid. She's like, oh, this is just what I've learned from my research. And it's like, I don't need to diss her. She doesn't need to diss me. She doesn't speak down to me, but she also doesn't put content out there where she's yelling at the camera, screaming at the camera or anything like that. So I really value watching this person and I ask questions sometimes and then I even share opinions sometimes because I'm like oh my god that was like why why and and there's a big part of me that every single time that I watch something happen on the news on social media my heart sinks because I watch how people tear each other apart we can no longer have a healthy debate with someone we have to insult, we have to put down, we have to yell and scream and be the smartest person in the room, even when sometimes we're saying the exact same thing. And that is something that has been really hard for me, not just this year, but for I don't even know how long that I told my husband, I was like, I, you know, he, he years ago, um, I think it was probably cause we, so we've been together seven years. So four years ago, we, you know, he's like, I'm surprised. Like you want to talk about politics because when we first started dating, you were like, Hey, I'm good. And then he, he saw how family stuff would go sometimes. And he's like, Oh, okay. You all are kind of like, Hey, let's not talk about this, but let's talk about this. Um, because there is that like, big dog syndrome in the room sometimes with certain people that that we were around um friend wise family wise you know society wise and and i've actually unfollowed so many people where where uh, i would follow them and be like wow your content's really good i'm learning from you and then all of a sudden it's like they shifted to this like i have to be angry and at first i found it funny but then i was like why do i get like anxious every time I see your content? Why do I have to like turn the video down and only have the captions going so I can't hear how you're saying it? Because in, the, in their tone was just like yelling at the screen. Now guys, hear me out. There is a difference between being passionate about something. I get loud when I'm passionate, but I'm not going to put someone down. And, and I'm going to try to pull that back because I'm like, man, I remember, I know what that's like to feel like, okay, this person's yelling at me from the TV or the stage or the social media or my phone. Um, but I want to pull back so that people can hear what I have to say, because what I've recognized through the work of, of, of learning through psychology from my, my education background, but also personal research on like trauma informed training is that nobody learns when they're in fight or flight. 
it's impossible to be like, yeah, let my amygdala, the br- part of my brain that is about um, processing emotion, help me, you know, it, it's, it's, it shuts down at that point. And I wanted to pull up something by the National Alliance on Mental Health, and I'll share this in the link to everything. But they talk about how some uh, individuals, when they are when, with with yelling specifically, the problem with yelling is that it is part when it is especially a part of abuse, things can happen such as like depression, anxiety, fear, and and one of the lists it kind of gives a, a list of like the person uh, with being verbally abused where it's like okay the volume of the person's voice, the tone of the voice, the dead look of the eye of the mother, uh, the disdain or scornful facial expressions. So you know the long duration of the yelling for hours upon hours upon hours. Then comes the name and the insults, the unpredictable flip of the switch that turn your mother or person into someone else is literally what it's listing. So I want to list this because I'm like, oh my God, because if you keep going down, it actually talks about how the brain functions with, uh, within that. And, and when it comes to mental health, it's so important to understand that maybe what you're experiencing right now, like a brain overload is that, uh, your, your brain is just saying, Hey, I can't process this person to see if they're a safe person. I can't process the situation for my brain to register that we're just having a conversation. And I would hear that from people and still do hear that from people is I'm just really passionate. I just really want you to understand. But when me and the other person are saying the exact same thing and you still result to insults, you still result to yelling and being like, well, she doesn't know. And da, 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 and I'm just trying, I'm so passionate about this. I just need you to understand. And if you just learn through your thick head, that's not actually registering in my brain as you wanting to help me. But if someone's passionate and they're just like, you know, I just, I want everyone to hear this. I really want you to understand that this is what is going on. I'm going to lean in. But the other way where you're like, you're just, you're just too, you're just too no, like dumb, da, 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 whatever, whatever they say to insult me, I can't hear you over the tone of your voice, your facial expressions and your body language. Because my body's going into like, do I have to deck you right now? Or do I need to shut this down and leave so I can process what the heck just happened? And I find that in in an election year, my, my anxiety rises and I kept going like, it has to be politics. It has to be politics. And it's like, no, I do a lot of advocacy work in the foster care community. And it does um, happen in this world for me as well, because people are very passionate about helping foster youth. And um, there was a situation that I was in uh, last year where, you know, we were talking about the need of what foster care needed. And somebody was just like, I'm so exhausted seeing former foster youth be homeless. And they were very passionate about what they were saying. But not once was I afraid of the conversation. Not once was I afraid of the tone of the person's voice because they were passionate about it, rightfully so. Um, Because in the foster care community, we see a large portion of former foster youth becoming homeless. It's like, I think it's at 20 or 25% right now. I believe it's at 20%. But when they surveyed the homeless population in the foster care, uh, sorry, when they we surveyed the homeless population, they found 50% of the homeless population had said, yes, we have served some sort of time in the foster care system at some point in our life. So that's a per, that's half of the homeless population saying, hey, at some point I was put in foster care or kinship care or guardianship care or whatever they label it as. And I was like, why is it that, and I asked somebody, I was like, why is it that I can listen to these people in these advocacy spaces talking, but I can't do the same thing with, with like politics, which I care about a lot. And someone was like, well, because of the trauma that you experienced, your brain actually might be registering it still as a dangerous situation for you, especially when they go into yelling, screaming, uh, insults, especially like I just, y'all, can I... I'm going to sit on this for a second. (laughs) Why can we not have conversations? And why do we have to result to name calling during election year? I don't understand you. And you, if you want to drop those comments and say, this is why I have to insult so-and-so so so that they will listen to me, go for it. 
But I'm going to tell you right now, when you start to insult people, you lose people 100% of the time, every single time, every day. And I don't think that it is fair that we do, um, that we, we do this thing that we have to insult people to get a point of cross. I don't understand it and I don't agree to it. I think it's, I think it's callous. I think it's rude. I think you're a horrible person when you do that. I think it is immature. And I think you should be teaching yourself how to go and have a real conversation, a real debate with somebody. And I remember the first time, it was in 2009 and 2010, that I had sat with someone that I completely disagreed with. And I remember saying something because they started yelling at me and insulting me and my intelligence and literally saying like, oh, this is why no man is going to ever marry you, that I was like, and we will never talk again. Like at that point, I was like, this person is not for me. They're against me. Like to this day, if I ever see that person out in public, I walk the other way because I'm like, you are not a person that I want to have a conversation with. And I didn't know this person for very long for them to equate my intelligence because I had a different view than they did. And my view was based off things that I had gone through with my trauma. And that was not something that I wanted to get into with this person to say, like, this is why I had that belief at the time. Um, And I'm not going to share what that belief was either. But it was just one of those things that it was like, you don't even care about me as a person to sit down with me and understand why I believe what I believe. So why, why are you safe to have a conversation about trying to help me move into a different direction in my beliefs? faith-based wise, political wise, whatever, personally wise, whatever. But when you result to insults, when you result to trying to take somebody out and, and just say, I'm the bigger person in the room and I'm smarter than you and whatever your motive is, you're very immature. I'm going to say it. I'm going to call it out because someone needs to. And I don't see anybody saying that. Like immaturity is not an insult. It is a reality. But when you insult somebody and say that they're stupid, that no one's going to love them, that no one's going to want them because of a belief, you don't even know why they believe what they believe. And I've had the honor of being able to sit with a ton of different people who have had very different experiences than mine and them knowing my experience. And we've been able to come to an understanding of why that person believes the same thing, even when we don't have the same beliefs. And I have had people say, oh, you believe this? We can't be friends. And I'm like, because I had a different opinion than they did. And this was not a life altering opinion, y'all. This was something super simple. And I'm, I sit back sometimes and I'm like, okay, then you're just not my people. And that's okay. Like you're allowed to believe what I, like I firmly believe you are allowed to believe what you want to believe, but you need to understand what we do believe in has ramifications to something. And if you want to be able to to really look at that belief and say, okay, you know, if we vote for this or vote that way, these things come from that. As long as you can acknowledge that and you feel comfortable voting for what you vote for, cool, whatevs. Like, I'm not going to come at you. I can still be your friend at the end of the day. But I have had people come to me and say, nope, sorry, we can't be friends. And that's, that's, that's fine. That's the way that you live. But I will never, ever, ever be like, well, you're an idiot for, no, Like we have two different beliefs. There's reasons, but what my hope would be is that we can come to an understanding that you believe what you believe for reasons that you, like there are reasons you believe in it. And if I'm not willing to meet you and say like, okay, what, what is that? Why is that? Then I'm never going to get to understand why you believe what you believe. I'm just going to call you out and call you names. Like that's not fair. So there, so there's that. But what that does is that when we don't see the person across from us, When we don't value them and say, I value your experience, we are willing to cross a line to say, now I'm going to insult you. I'm going to come at you. Like y'all, like a debate. I want you guys to go really look at what a real debate is. Debate is not about name calling and insults. It, it's actually to be like, okay, I'm going to try to persuade you to this understanding, but can you do, let me ask you that. Like, can you do that without insulting somebody? If you can't, you need to work on your debating. But 
what this does for someone like me who experienced a ton of trauma of like, this is how my, my, my life I grew up in. This is how the environment functioned was like, you don't even get an opinion, even if it's right. If I just want to say that you're wrong, I'm going to say that you're wrong. Even if we said this exact same thing. So I was looking up a couple of things because I, I, I love researching and I just, I used Google a couple things just to, to have like a couple articles that are there, but you could also do um, Google scholar. There's a ton more that is going to be here in Google scholar for people like you guys, like that don't have access to uh, libraries that you have to pay for pay for but you can do like the emotional um stress of yelling at someone just look that up and then it's like okay there's um, there is an emotional um usually people who get emotionally abused it's in this way it's like you're you're getting insulted you're being yelled at you're trying to figure out like your body's trying to figure out like are we in danger are we not in danger and i can't tell the difference when someone is in my face yelling and screaming and their spits coming on my face and they're insulting me and they're yelling about how i should vote one way or another I, I can't hear you. Like, and it's not me being like, ha, 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 I can't hear you. Like, I'm like, literally my amygdala is like, oh, oh, like I can't function with emotion. I can't function with thought process. So I have to sit back for a second and understand, like, I need to go process this. I got to go cope with this because there is a lot of us who have experienced abuse and these conversations are really hard because, we, we are still dealing with the trauma that we had in our childhood. Um, and even if we're not still dealing with our trauma, our brain still registers someone getting in our face, clenched hands as I'm going to get taken out physically right now. That's how our brain still registers it. Even if you're sitting down getting really aggressive and like yelling and screaming and insulting me, I'm like, again, I'm looking and be like, mm, if I deck them, like, is anything going to happen to me? Um, but I want to, I want to challenge you to look up, kind of look up some stuff. Um, because when we look up at the impact of what happens, that when people are yelling and screaming or insulting us, there there's a lot of things that we can see. There's the side effects, like people's heart rate and blood pressure can increase. Your autoimmune system can take a hit. You can, this is why some people are like, oh, you know, I hung out with this friend and like we talked about a lot about debating or I know a ton of people right now where it feels like fatigue being on social media. Um, you, you might actually be feeling very tired a couple days later. You might be like, oh, I don't really remember yesterday because like these things happened. Um, but there, there is a thing as, as getting overwhelmed consistently. So some of the things that you can do that actually are very helpful is you can mute your social media. You can not take that call from that person who is like calling you every other day to give you an update on things or like tell you why you should believe what you believe. And I have a friend who, who, and this, this is not, um, on politics, but like he has shared openly on social media about a situation he encounters regularly with someone who, who insults him and like, oh, like we see this with, with, um, oftentimes with religion where people are like, oh, you're going to hell. Da, 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 da. It's like every time you're like, well, you're, you need to apologize to God and da, da, da. it's just like, okay, but you're not, what you're not doing right now is like, but you trying to be like this blunt, honest force to this person's life, but you're insulting them. They're not being able to hear you over what you're doing to them. And that's not okay. And like when my friend was sharing that with me, like, you know, he'll share memes. You already know who you are. He'll, he'll share memes, religious memes with me. And like, you know, some of it's like, I'm dying laughing. And then other ones I'm like, that was very heartfelt. Thank you for sharing that with me. But it's like, whenever he has shared, not every time, but like the times I've seen it, I'm like, I can't believe this is what you're being treated like. Like, I can't believe those text messages. I can't believe the messages that are being sent to you. I'm so sorry. And it breaks my heart because it's like, how are you supposed, especially from like a religious standpoint, how are you supposed to reach someone if you just keep insulting them and yelling at them and doing all these things? Because when, um, when I look up Taylor Counseling Group, they actually have an article from 2022. This is something that somebody, um, Dr. Christopher Taylor reviewed and, and looked at, but they talk about the psychological effects of yelling. You can look at the psychological effects of um, insulting, but there with yelling or being being with insults, you can get depressed, you can get anxious, you can have low self esteem, it can cause chronic pain, it could also impact the relationship, and like obviously like that's the first thing to go, but but really it's like I don't 
like how I feel when I'm getting this from all sides, but it's like, this is, that comes with the territory of an election year. Um, I think with, when we're looking at like how to be not positive, like that's not the answer is not just to be like, let's be positive and let's not talk about it or let's never have an open conversation about it. It's like find people that are going to let you speak and not insult you. Find people in your corner who will let you ask questions to them about what they believe. That's not going to just like cuss you out because you asked the question. Um, find people in your circle who you can get to know why they believe what they believe and and that way you can learn but also do do your own stuff if, if it's like turn off social media for the next couple months cool do that but like if you're if you're wanting to get to know information and I like following different people just to hear from different types of um, groups different different beliefs different um, backgrounds, different understandings, different upbringings like I love learning because it's like it un- makes me understand why people, do things the way that they do, how they function, why they vote for certain things, but why they advocate for certain things too. And I know um, that recently I've just been feeling fatigued when I go on social media and it's because, and it's not the conversations. Like I have so many people that I follow where it's like, okay, this is what's going on. And it's like, man, that's a lot. That's heavy. There's all of this stuff. Like just things with immigration, things with how people are treating each other, things across the world and in Israel, things happening in Gaza, things happening in Africa, things that are happening in Mexico, things that are happening in the US, like all of these things. And then then there's the couple people I have followed in the past that I've I've had to step back from. And I'm going to be honest, like I've had to step back from because they're just insulting everybody. And then I have gotten the message directly in my inbox. <laughs> like, I didn't even say anything that was political. But because I'm sharing my story online, people believe that it is a political type of content or for attention seeking. Um, but I have recognized that there are times that I have to go silent and like just get off social media. I have to not have those conversations with friends. I have to pull up the music and just kind of take a moment to step back because of those insults are so freaking loud. And it is not guys like I'm not even going to share with what they are because it's just stupid at this point that people feel that that is the way to debate. And really that, that is the, the childlike debating when people come into the situation and they're like, I'm going to insult you. I'm going to tear you down. I'm going to hurt you emotionally. So that way you stop talking. Like I'm going to make you mad. And I had someone do that to me recently. And then it's like, and then add the daily stress of life on top of that. Now I'm going to say something that not a lot of people would is, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's just an election year. It'll go away in January. I'm like, no, no, it won't. Like this is part of our everyday life. But if I'm willing to sit down and have conversations with people to really understand what they believe and why they believe it, I am going to be able to sit at a table with five different people who have different belief systems and say, okay, I understand you. Um, Now there is going to be the moments where I'm like, I will not sit with you because what you believe is very, very bad. But if it is just like we have a difference on, on on an opinion on something, I can sit with you and say, okay, well, let, let me ask you this question. And I would want to do this privately, not open on like social media or with a big group, but just be like, okay, you said that you were, you believe this. Can you tell me why you believe that? Does that stem deeper than just what you've seen friends go through? Is this something that personally happened to you? Because it's like when we really understand that, we can understand why someone can get very passionate about something. And passion is very different than being aggressive to be rude and to tear down people. Again, like the the type that I'm talking about literally is the people who are like, I'm going to uh, take you out physically, emotionally, mentally. I want to take you down. I'm the smartest person in the room. Being passionate is like you really believe in what you believe. and And sometimes that passion gets very loud. But it's different when it gets violent, when it gets rude, when it insults. So if we can help during this time in this season to reduce that aggression, that real nastiness, and be willing to be people who are like, I want to understand where you're at and I want to let you be passionate and I want to hear what you have to say. You're going to actually come out of this being like, okay, I disagree with you. 
I don't believe the same thing that you do, but I didn't have to tear you down in the midst of it just to win the conversation. You could literally just be like, we don't believe the same thing. That's okay. Um, I believe what I believe because that's that's all <laughs> I I am here like on this earth. The only thing that I can do is control me and my household. Like I can't even control my household, but like me and my household, we serve the Lord. That's not a bad statement, <laughs> but it is something that I f- firmly believe. Like my job is not to persuade you to believe what I believe. My hope would be that if we understood each other that we could respect each other. And again, I'm not for aggression. I'm not for danger. I'm not for for being um, nasty to people. I'm not for violence. Like I'm not for any of that. So if that's what you're for, like, no, I will not sit with you. But if you're wanting to actually get to know me, you would want to know what I believe and why I believe it. We want to be friends. We can have differences of opinion. We can have believe in different things and we could still sit down and have a conversation. And I've been able to do that with people who literally like different religions, different upbringings, lived in different countries, completely different religious beliefs, um, but completely also different like um, political beliefs as well and be able to understand why they believe what they believe. And again, we didn't leave that conversation being like, yep, I believe everything you do. I'm going to, you know. That's not what happened. It was like, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in the same thing, but I respect you enough to not try to hurt you emotionally, mentally, and physically. And that's what I hope you get from this episode is like, again, you can sit across from someone to say, I would like to get to know what you believe and why without yelling, screaming, insulting, cursing you out, trying to drag you down. So just so I'm heard that that's my hope that you get from this. So I hope to hear your comments at the bottom. Please message me if you have any questions, but let's be, let's go into this season. Let's be in this season together, being able to actually like, if you want to debate, debate, cool. I will listen, but don't get aggressive. Don't insult. Don't put someone down emotionally, mentally, or physically just because, and, and just to win an argument. There's no reason to do that in a debate. There's no reason to do that to understand somebody. So I hope that that's what you hear. If you guys have any questions, let me know and we'll go from there. Have a great day.